Hi folks, it's Mike here again. Uh, today I'm going to show some undocumented and or poorly documented features of the Korg SQ-1 sequencer. Uh, it's an analog sequencer. I've done a few videos on this so far and as I've learned how to use it and gone back and forth between the manual and the uh, FAQ uh, site online, there's just some things that really aren't explained uh, that are quite useful. So that's the goal today. So here's the SQ-1 that you all have. Um, I'm connecting it to a modular synthesizer and I'm using the analog outputs here. So here's the four outputs. Uh, the patch is very simple. There's two independent voices. So channel A goes off to a VCO here, which then goes to its own amplifier and it's contro controlled by its own envelope generator who gets its gate from the gate out for channel A. Channel B, it's the same thing. It has its own oscillator, amplifier, envelope generator, and it gets its own gate. That way you can have two independent channels and you can hear what's going on. So to start with, uh, I guess I want to show you the um, uh, in the different modes what's actually coming out of CVA and CVB. But first to show you that uh, I have channel A and channel B set differently, I'll press the function button down here. You can see the channel A is set to this 2 volt range and it's chromatically quantized. Channel B I have set to 5 volt range and also chromatically uh, quantized. I did this on purpose so you can see something that's a little unexpected uh, but is something that you should know um, when we're running the sequence. So first I'll put it in the parallel mode so you can hear just what the two channels sound like. This is not intentionally supposed to be musical. Uh, so one channel has high notes, that's the 5 volt channel B. The other channel has low notes, that's the 2 volt channel A. Okay, so you can hear that we got two channels that are doing something completely different. So the first thing I want to do is just go through the sequencer mode, which is this knob, to the different modes and see, well, what comes out. So let's go first to this kind of zigzag pattern and press play. First thing you'll notice is that the notes are now the same coming out of channel A and channel B. So that's interesting. So since they were different before, which one is it now using? And so what we'll do is we'll press the function button and we'll find out when I press the function button, only the top row is being used, so the lights are on which is the two volt chromatic thing. So what's happened is it's playing all 16 stages, but that bottom row, which used to be high notes, is now quantized to the two volt range and not the five volt range that it was actually set to. So I guess that's the first unexpected result that I saw. Um, it makes sense. I mean, it has to be on some range, but that's what it does. So in the zigzag mode, that's what happens. Well, what happens if I go to the second mode up? where it runs channel A and then channel B. Once again, the notes coming out of channel A and channel B are the same, and once again, they're quantized to the two volt range. Okay, let's go to the back and forth. Back and forth does kind of what you would expect. A and B are independent of each other, and you hear the high notes and the low notes. And if I press the function key, yeah, we can see that um, we do have quantization of 2 volts on channel A and 5 volts on channel B like we expect. In the parallel mode, it works as we expect also with quantization happening the way we would think. If I go to the CV duty mode, I'm getting, again, the same notes here, except since the duty cycle is now being determined by the lower row of knobs, you can hear a little bit difference in the gate duration in the notes. If I go to CV slide, again, channel A and channel B notes are the same, and they are being, again, determined by the 2 volt range quantization of channel A. And if I go to CV duty random, channel A and channel B are again the same, and it's using the same quantization of 2 volts. And finally, random. In random mode, we're now getting some high notes as it's jumping around. If I press the button, you can see it's still using the 2 volt quantization, and channel A and channel B are the same again. So, summarizing, the only time where you really get different notes coming out of channel A and B is either in the back and forth or the parallel mode, which is kind of expected.
Okay, the next thing I want to show you um, is I'll put it in the 16 step sequence mode here, kind of that second position on the knob right here. And um, again, C, B, A, and B are the same. I'm going to start playing around with the gates a little bit. So you can hear the same notes coming out of C, B, A, and B. Now, as we all know, if you go into the uh, button mode here and select the gate on off and start turning gates on and off, we will not unsurprisingly hear you know, little gaps in the notes. Now, we all expect that, and that's well documented. But one of the things I wondered was, well, during these gaps, what voltages are coming out of CVA and CVB? I mean, we can hear with our ears that CVA and B are the same, but you can't really hear during the gap because I have the gates on the synthesizer set uh, short. We can't hear what's happening during these gaps, but I can go over to the envelope generators and turn up their release time. And then I'll find out something interesting that actually does make sense, which is when a gate is off, the voltage coming out for that stage stays at whatever the last on stage was. So let me just show you that, that it makes more sense by just turning off one gate. So right now I just have this stage off, and you can hear it's holding the note. So what if I turn off more of these? All the off stages will be held at the same voltage determined by the last one that was on. So if I turn this one on, it's being held at this voltage. If I turn that one on, it's going to hold at that voltage, and so on. So that's important, and it's the behavior that is going to be very beneficial, as I'll show you later. But the control voltages that are coming out for an off stage are determined by the last on stage. All right, so let's turn these gates back on for a second. Next thing I want to show you is um, SLU. So to show SLU, first of all, I'm going to shorten the duty cycle a little bit. Turn my release. There we go. Make some short notes. And what I want you to see here is um, the effect that SLU has on the length of the gates coming out. Right now you can hear they're quite short. Make them even shorter. But now if I go to my mode button and choose, I'm sorry, it's slide, not SLU, my mistake. I'm going to put slide on the first step here. And the first thing we'll notice is that it changed the duty cycle from this very short gate that I had to 100%. And this is confirmed if I go over to the envelope generators and look at the blinking lights there, I can see it. It's holding and then going shorter. In fact, if I put several slews in a row, now you can hear the voltage actually slewing, but now we have gates on 100% of the time that those three stages are on and never turns off. So slew not only slews between the notes, but also changes the duty cycle of the stage to 100% independent of whatever you've set the knob to. And again, that's going to be an important thing when you want to make longer notes. So it turns out if we take these two things together, the gate effect of holding the voltage at the previous on gate along with the slide effect of changing the duty cycle to 100%. We can now make notes of different durations. So that's interesting. So I could make, uh, since I have 16 steps here, with each step representing about a 16th note, I should be able to now make, excuse me for the shaky video, I should be able to make um, notes of different durations. So let's try that out. So I'm going to do, let's go back to the gate. I'm going to turn off a bunch of gates. Now if I have, go to slide here, if I put slide on the first of each of these four 
steps and go back at the same time and look at gate. So gates are on and slide is on on the same stages. And now what I have is four sustained quarter notes. And the reason that's happening is the slide is making the duty cycle 100%. The gates being off is holding the voltages at the last on stage. So I can even make, by doing this, now I have a half note and two quarter notes. Or if I turn the gate on for this step, and slide also on for that step. I can actually achieve a half note, a quarter note, an eighth note, and two sixteenth notes. So you have a half note here, quarter note here, eighth note here, and two sixteenth notes. So again, you have to have the gate on for those to work, and you have to have slide turned on. So that's how you make notes of different durations in the same sequence. So that's very cool. And now, last thing I want to show is how to achieve rests using this technique. Now we already know that from the beginning, when you turn a gate off, you know, you don't hear anything. Um, so you might say, well, that's a rest. But what happens if I want to make a, a long rest? Well, it turns out there's a way to do that. So right now we have a, up here we have like a long half note. But let's make it a quarter note instead by turning the gate on for the second step. So now I have quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth, sixteenth. But instead of having a note sounding here, I actually want to have a rest. So how do I do that? Well, we know that we have to have um, gates off in order to not hear something, so I'm going to do this instead. So what I've done now is here's the quarter note represented by these four stages. I put the gate on for the first and last of that. Excuse me. And now I have a quarter note and a quarter rest. Then a quarter note on, eighth note, sixteenth note, sixteenth note. So for this to work, because these two stages are on, the knobs have to be set the same. If they weren't, I'll change them. You'll hear a slew. You hear that little blip. And again, that's getting back to the behavior of the gates and what voltages they're going to be held at. So if you want to make a sustained note followed by a sustained rest, then with the notes on, you have to have gate on the beginning and at the end. These knobs have to be set to the same value for that to sustain as one note. And then you can have that rest. So I can also show this for eighth notes and sixteenth notes, but you guys get the idea, so I'm not going to have to show you all that. So that's just a couple of things that, you know, I've found using the SQ-1 that when I scratch my head and look back at the manual, it's like, doesn't seem to explain it very well. So hopefully that sheds a little bit of light. And uh, if you got any questions or comments, please leave them, and we'll talk to you next time.